good, everybody? It's your boy David from Shaking the Damn Table, bringing you the Black History Month Move of the Week. We had the honor and privilege to go to the historic 16th Street Baptist Church to get an exclusive one-on-one -on -one tour and interview with the Reverend Arthur Price. He having residing there 16 years, we got a lot of insight and perspective and you don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. 16th Street Baptist Church, where Jesus Christ is the main attraction. I want to give you a little um, facts about um, 16th Street Baptist Church. 16th Street Baptist Church is the oldest African-American church in the city of Birmingham. It was organized in 1873, 10 years after the Emancipation Proclamation, 10 years after Abraham Lincoln signed the document that would ensure the freedom of African-Americans from being slaves. A group of African-Americans wanted a church of their own, so they started the first Baptist church for colored people. Now that church was on uh, Fourth Avenue and 12th Street, but it moved to this spot in the mid-1880s and renamed the church the 16th Street Baptist Church. This is actually the second edifice on this site. Um, the first edifice on this site was said to be a very beautiful edifice, but at the turn of the century, around 1909 or 1905, the um, people in Birmingham said, the power structure in Birmingham said, no black church should be that beautiful. The um, steeple exceeds the city code, tear it down, and they did. So in 1909, Wallace Rayfield, the second licensed African-American architect in the United States, designed the church that we are in today. And it was completed in 1911. This church was designed by a black man, it was built by black people. And 16th Street became a place that had a dual purpose in Birmingham. It was a place for spiritual formation. It was also a place for social recreation. Because in the Jim Crow South, you couldn't go to the, uh, the Lyric, the Alabama Theater, or to a BJCC. So when African-Americans wanted to have events, they would bring it to the 16th Street Baptist Church. If they wanted to hear Booker T. Washington, he would come to the 16th Street Baptist Church. W.E.B. Du Bois spoke at the 16th Street Baptist Church. Raymond Clyde Bethune was at the 16th Street Baptist Church. Paul Robeson was here. Um, um, Marion Anderson did a concert here. Uh, Jackie Robinson spoke here. And the list goes on and on. But probably the most noted speaker is the late, great Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King who was brought here by the Reverend um, Fred Shuttlesworth to the segregate the parks and schools here in Birmingham in 1963. And when Dr. King came here in April of 63, it was very little fanfare. Um, they tried to do some sit-ins at, at some lunch counters, but it wasn't really getting a whole lot of attention. Good Friday of 1963, Dr. King is arrested and he writes his famous letter from the Birmingham jail. And then in May of 63, someone had the bright idea to get the children involved in the movement, and the children's march emanated out of the 16th Street Baptist Church. High school students, uh, middle school students would fill this church about 3,000 deep, and they would get instructions from Dr. King, from um, Dr. Abernathy, Andrew Young, and, and some others, and the goal was to send the children out 50 at a time um, through those doors, and they were going to be met by Bull Connor, his water, his water tank, um, the dogs, the billy clubs, and police. And the genius of King was is that he wanted to make sure that America knew that there were two Americas in the United States. So the way he was going to get America's attention was to get it on this new invention called television, which was about 10 years old at that time, because in 1963, no Facebook, no Snapchat, no Instagram. So you put it on television. And at that time, the evening news was only a 15-minute format. And because of what was going on down here, it expanded to the 30-minute format that we know of today. So Dr. King was successful in getting um, the events in Birmingham on the evening news. And because he was successful, that forced um, the city officials to have a meeting with Dr. King, and they did come to a compromise. Dr. King was so successful in Birmingham that it emboldened him to go to Washington to have his famous March on Washington. And the March on, on the March on Washington, that's where Dr. King made his famous I Have a Dream speech. 18 days after Dr. King said I Have a Dream, 18 days after he said he wanted his children to be judged by the content of their character and not the color of their skin, the response in Birmingham to the I Have a Dream speech was the bomb of the 16th Street Baptist Church because it became the, the central figure and the focal point of the Children's March and the movement during that time. So on September 15, 1963, at 10.22 a.m., after a Sunday school lesson called A Love That Forgives, it was Youth Sunday, and children was in the bathroom changing 
I had to sing in the choir. Five girls were there. Addie McCollins, Collins, Denise McNair, Cynthia Wesley, Carol Robeson, and Sarah Collins were in the bathroom. And at 1022, a bomb went off and pretty much decimated this whole side of the church. Every window here back was blown out and debris all the way up to the altar. And at the end of the explosion, four of the five girls were dead. Addie Mae Collins, Denise McNair, Cynthia Wesley, and Carol Robeson were found dead. And you can imagine there was pandemonium and bedlam um, in, the, in the streets of Birmingham. And we believe that it caused um, white America to take introspection of herself. And a lot of white people said, um, we may not be for um, um, desegregation, but we're not for terrorism and murder, which that was. And one of the things that um, came out of the bombing was um, this window where Jesus is knocking on the door. As I said, every other window was blown out. But the only damage done to that window was the face of Christ was blown out and everything else remained intact. This, this bomb was literally, literally heard all around the world, so much so that the people of Wales wanted to show their solidarity with the movement, and they gifted the church a, a stained glass window in the balcony, which you can't see at night, but it's what we call our Wales window. It's a black man suffering in the South like Christ on the cross, with one hand pushing out hatred, the other hand hoping for forgiveness. There's bullets going through his chest, and the inscription on the bottom is, you do it to me. Matthew 25, when Jesus said, when you do it to the least of these, you've also done it to me. 16th Street is now the National Historical Landmark. It became that in 2006. In 2017, as one week before Barack Obama left office, President Obama left office, he designated this area as the National Civil, Civil Rights Monument, and we get tens of thousands of visitors that want to hear about what happened here in 1963. What happened in 1963 was so important that when Nelson Mandela was freed from his jail um, in South Africa, he said if Birmingham could make strides for freedom, then there was hope for South Africa. So people from all around the world come to see um, and study what happened in 1963 because Birmingham became a place that changed the world and 16th Street Baptist Church was a vital part of it.